Well, coming up on today's show, one million EV drivers, can't be wrong, 100,000 Model 3 drivers, can't be wrong, Australia's fast chargers, can't be wrong. Well, thank you for listening. My name is Martin Lee, and welcome along to EV News Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are in the world. Here is your update for Sunday, the 14th of October, 2018. And I've been through every EV story I could find today, so you don't have to. Thank you to those on Patreon who uh, support this show, and four new patrons. I was about to say three. Uh, so everyone, may I please introduce you to the latest superheroes supporting the show, producer Carlos Walker. Carlos... You are a superhero. Producer Justin Pavlik. Thank you, Justin. Producer Carter Kayan. And executive producer, simply Paul. A bit like Cher or Madonna. It's simply Paul. He didn't give me a surname. So, superhero Paul. Thank you very much for supporting the show on patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. Thank you as well to myev.com for making the show. They've built the world's first marketplace all about buying and selling EVs, specifically EVs. No mucking about with fossil cars on there and things you don't need to see. It's pure EVs on there. It's totally free and you can use it to research and learn about electric cars as well. Well, if you follow Ryan McCaffrey from his Ride the Lightning podcast, check out his Twitter, by the way, because for his his other hat on, his IGN uh, job, he made a brilliant video of the new version 9 software and the new Atari games on... It was on a Tesla Model S, and I wonder whether he would use his own Model 3, his Spirit of Adventure, as he's called it. And uh, he didn't know because he hadn't had the update at the time of making the video, so he used an S, uh, but still those Atari games look so cool. Check out his Twitter, and he's posted the video on there. Uh, talking of those, by the way, if you want to buy a new Tesla, do it today or tomorrow. If you want to be guaranteed of the full US federal tax credit. We've known for a while that Tesla reached the 200,000 vehicle threshold. We now know if you wanted the full tax credit, order it today or tomorrow. It means you'll definitely get the vehicle delivered by December 31st this year, and it guarantees eligibility. Well, at least on behalf of the car maker, of course. It depends as well on your personal finance situation. A reminder, the taper-off goes from January to June now that it started, down to 3,750, and then for the next six months of the year, July to December, 1,800 $75, and then it's all gone. We'll start with a tweet from Barry. Now, Barry Woods is the director of EV innovation at Revision Energy, and he tweeted this, One million drivers can't be wrong on Wednesday, October the 10th at 11.01 in the morning. Somewhere in the United States, somebody bought the millionth car with a plug socket on since they came to market in 2011. Hashtag plug in America. Uh, it took a bit longer, he says, than Obama projected, but we're there, and the speed increases. Uh, well, talking of things ramping up, 100,000 Model 3 owners can't be wrong. A tenth of those EV drivers in the US. I suppose there's been some Model 3s going to Canada, but uh, for the sake of round numbers, go with me on this. A tenth of that total. That's an insane figure, right? A tenth of that total. And now driving... Model 3s, and doing some electric smiles around North America uh, because Tesla just reached the milestone of 100,000 Model 3s. It's been just over a year since production started, and a few of those Model 3s took their first tentative metres of rolling off a new General Assembly production line. And it's all thanks to a strong start to the quarter, quarter four, uh, that means over 1,000 vehicles a day are being built at Fremont. Well, Freda Electric pointed out the finer details of the story uh, because in overall production, uh, when accounting for the release candidates and engineering vehicles, Tesla actually achieved the milestone earlier in the week. But according to a source familiar with Tesla's production, its regular production numbers reached the 100,000 milestone. An important milestone for Tesla, which is transforming, uh, transitioning from a relatively niche automaker to a mass market auto manufacturer with the Model 3. Tesla's already producing electric vehicles at a higher rate than any legacy automaker on the planet. Legacy ma makers, that is, uh, with no sign of change really evident. Lots of great headlines coming out and great cars, by the way. I, you know, I know some people are very critical, but I do think those cars coming out, the Mercedes EQC, is a blooming lovely car. The Audi e-tron Quattro is a lovely car. The uh, Jaguar I-Pace, which is out, by the way, and starting to ramp up slowly, is a blooming lovely car. But there's not exactly a lot of them around. Those are the ones that are on sale already. Uh, so perhaps legacy automakers should be looking at that 100,000th Model 3 and then looking at their own efforts and thinking, hmm, how do we compare? You know what, I, I, I'm guessing, I imagine, 
There are many hours of boardroom meeting minutes currently devoted to Tesla's production. They won't admit it publicly. I mean, they, they, it, it would be a disaster for them to come out and say, we missed the boat on this. But I think many of those legacy incumbents are taking it very, very seriously. Whether we see it or not, I have no doubt they're taking it incredibly seriously. But we want the cars to buy and we want to see them and drive them and get excited about them, please. Come on. Well, Australia reached the milestone of 50 public DC fast chargers, that's 50 kilowatts or above, installed, not including the superchargers, by the way. That's according to Mark Kane for Inside EVs, who says it's a long way till the infrastructure in Australia could be considered satisfying, but at least more manufacturers are going to be willing to introduce EVs in Australia. Around 70% of DC fast chargers down under are supplied by tritium. Or is it tritium? I'd love to know. Uh, from uh, Brizzy, from Brisbane. Or uh, recently, tritium slash tritium received an order for at least 40 of their DC fast chargers for New South Wales and Australia. And of course, they are also the manufacturers of the mega, mega, mega chargers. That's the unofficial name we're giving them on this podcast. They're not technically called that. But the mega, mega, mega chargers, like the 350 kilowatt uh, chargers used in things like the Ionity network. Well, thank you very much to someone who forwarded me this note on the email this week. The email address is hello at evnewsdaily.com. The Australian Renewable Energy Agency, R-E-N-R-E-N-A, <laughs> having trouble spelling arena. It's very late here. Um, has partnered with Monash University and the tech provider Indra uh, to trial a microgrid. This article comes via PV Tech. Now, a microgrid is going to be connected and will include up to a megawatt of rooftop solar, 20 buildings with some automated energy management on them, and a megawatt hour of battery storage, all with electric vehicle charging stations as part of the plan as well. And that's super interesting because somewhere... The future of our energy supply and the transition is going to be with renewable. It's going to be with wind and it's going to be with solar. Actually, if we all have a little bit of PV or a little bit of solar, maybe we have some microgrids, those payments to the big infrastructure uh, providers for our grids around the world, if they go down and we start consuming less electricity off the grid, those payments go down. Who is going to manage the grid? It's interesting to think about how EVs fit into that as maybe storage devices themselves. Right, on to our question of the week this week. Uh, this is I, I love this bit of the show because this is where uh, you take control and you send, us, uh, send me your answers to question of the week, which this week has been this. What incentives are available where you live? Which ones have you taken advantage of? Which ones would you like to take advantage of if you're not an EV owner yet? And which ones are the most, most worthwhile at local or national level? Uh, we'll start with Phil. Now, Phil Roberts, who is the MD at Electric Future up in Wakefield here in the UK. Uh, now, Phil is a partner of this podcast, and I always try and get through the answers to question of the week chronologically to make it fair. And Phil was actually first off the bat on this one. So we'll start with Phil, and he says uh, he just bought a new Nissan Leaf 40 kilowatt hour. So he's still got the £4,500 plug-in car grant. He also got a dealer contribution of £1,000, as it was the first customer car in the country. That'd be kind of unusual for the dealer to be doing contributions, but he did. The other incentives that he says really make a difference for him, zero road tax, free parking in Leeds on the council-owned car parks and the on-street bays, the zero-rate congestion charge for the ULEZ in London, that's the ultra-low emission zone, but... What a great name that is, the ULEZ. And uh, EV uh, bays are also close to the shopping centre doors and you get a space as well. And free use of an internal combustion engine car if he needs for two weeks from Liz Nissan, uh, just for any particular reason. Now, obviously, Phil, who has a business as an MD and he's on top of all the things like company car tax, he says low car tax rates are dropping drastically from 2020 and 2021 tax year. So no car tax for company fuel. Electric is not a road fuel, therefore it's non-taxable, 100% right down against tax in the first year. Now, although that's slightly above me, but thank you very much to Phil. And if you want some clarification on that, I'm sure that I can uh, shoot him a note and he can give you some more thoughts, by the way, on that. Hello to Philippe Calvé. He says the federal uh, incentive for his EV from the Canadian government is nothing at the moment. Uh, but the provincial, and that's interesting actually in Quebec, um, new vehicle purchase is $8,000. Imported, used vehicle purchase from other provinces or the USA is $4,000 and that comes on top of the incentives from the initial territory which dramatically reduced the cost of an owning an EV. Ontario used to give $14,000 but we know the story with Tesla and those have all gone now. 
For charge points, $600 from Hydro Quebec, plus $500 from many cities around the province. Thank you very much. Hello to Matthew Ellis. Piggybacking off an alternative fuel tax incentive for CNG and LNG, the state of Oklahoma has a 75% incentive for public charges, level 2 or level 3, and there's no cap. The charges must be networked and charge a fee to the customer. Thank you very much for that. And Matthew says, congratulations on the EV. Thank you very much, Matthew Ellis. Yes, my wife is delighted with her new... No, it's a it's, it's new to us, but it's used, a two-year-old used uh, Renault Zoe, if you haven't heard uh, the podcast over the last couple of days. It arrived, and she is delighted. And if, uh, earlier today, uh, because previously she's had no interest at all in me banging on about RFID tags and things and how to charge. And today she was like, can, can you actually show me how to... So we had to go to the... the we live two minutes from a polar. We're polar plus members and uh, we live a couple of minutes away from a polar charger so she goes can you just run me through that <laughs> okay let's go down there so we drive down there today and <laughs> she charged her car for the first time which I, which is lovely and she's totally on board and she's delighted with her Renault Zoe Hello to Andre Gil da Costa. It says, here in Portugal, the government offers a flat €2,250 incentive for the first 1,000 EV or plug-in EVs sold every year. In addition, companies that purchase pure EVs get the VAT, the value-added tax, the VAT back. So 23% of the full price of the car, and it's how he's getting his Ionic this year. Mark Garnett says he wasn't sure at first about giving free money in the UK to anyone buying an EV. Was it just a licence for car manufacturers to put the price up by £5,000 and then the government reduce it by £5,000 to you know, buy a similar drop so they're making more money? He says the previous drop to £4,500 is sensible and whilst he would have preferred a step down after the recent news that it's going down to 3500 he would like to see it go down in £500 increments. He says it's more important the long-term announcement in advance of when the changes are going to happen so you can work out when it's going to be down to zero. He says, in other words, don't just go down from 3500 to zero overnight. Step it down so people can make their future buying decisions. He would say that he should, that you would, as an incentive, it would be nice to see uh, £500 a year added to combustion cars, which could maybe be used to offset the money that indeed comes to uh, EV buyers. Hello to Robin. Robin Lungstrom says, Nice to hear you in our little country. Yes, earlier this week, Monday to Wednesday, I was on a bit of an EV fact-finding mission, and we went to Stockholm in Sweden, which is mega, mega beautiful. Not the cheapest place to go for food and drink, but hey, it's gorgeous to go there. And I was really impressed with how many Teslas we saw in the EV infrastructure there too. He said, right, here in Sweden, first of all, we have the bonus slash malice system that gives us between 6,000 to 0 euros incentive when buying a car that emits less than 60 grams of CO2 per kilometre. If you buy a car that emits more than 95 grams per kilometre of CO2, you pay a higher road tax. And if the car emits more than 145 grams, then the tax curve sharpens upwards. So that's a mix of incentives and also uh, partly taxing you for having a car that emits lots as well. Hello, Tony. Tony Goodwin sent me an email to hello at evnewsdaily.com. Uh, he's in the UK, so he used the £4,500 purchase incentive. He said it was critical, actually. And even though it's going down to 3500 uh, and it's going to be going even lower as time goes on, uh, he said he'd considered many options... Uh, uh, having one car only or replacing just one of them, but the money was very important to him. Without the incentive, I think he says, I think I would have retained my other fossil car for another year and gone for a plug-in just to sort of test the water. Although he has reservations about complexities of plug-in cars. Thank you very much, Tony. Right, there's a few more e emails to get through. Let's head around the world and find out what incentives are available where you live. Jack Oakley says, I live in northeast Pennsylvania. I believe the location provides a substantial incentives. EVs are not too popular here at the moment. Uh, he said the EV I purchased was on the BMW lot for six months. No, really? Uh, my first EV was purchased earlier this year. A 2016 BMW i3, full BEV, not the range extender. And he got it at 7,500 miles as it was coming off a two-year lease. Pennsylvania offers a $1,750 cash rebate on used EVs. It's an online submission and he got the check in four weeks. Hello to Brian. Now, Brian Weatherall, another supporter of this podcast, he said, I live in the northeast of England and the majority of councils here provide free charging and parking for EVs at various CYC. Charge your car posts in car parks and public buildings. Durham has a fixed ch uh, charge of £1. He says that's where I mostly charge. And it's good value when you think about free parking, uh, if you include free parking. 
And thank you very much uh, for mentioning as well about the places where you can go uh, to park. He says the reason uh, for this is down purely to human nature. If something's free, people take advantage. And if you work in the city centres, you could save £100 a month on parking charges by plugging your car in all day and leaving it all day. He says if you charge a pound for charging, it persuades people to only park there as long as they need to. He also uses the InstaVault charges at Bannatine's Gyms, currently on a free introductory offer. Kent, hello Kent Falkenstrom, says hello Martin. Danish tax agreement on EVs started in 2016 and is supposed to end by the end of the year or when 5,000 EVs have been sold. I really hope they extend the period with a low tax rate as far as 5,000 EVs have been sold that uh, I understand. From April 2017, the government entered into an agreement to postpone the phasing in of tax on electric cars. So that's interesting. Some people around the world getting sort of free money, some tax credits and some just not getting taxed. I think that's the Norwegian reason why EVs are so expensive uh, because the tax on fossil cars is so much. Finally, let's go to South Africa. Uh, Michael says, Michael Klaskin, Klaskin Johnson says, in South Africa, it's zero. Nada, nothing. Uh, the few models that are available here get fully imported and slapped with a 40% luxury vehicle import tariff. So we've been all around the world and hearing about some of the free money, but in South Africa, I'm afraid, my friend, you get nothing there. Thank you so much to everybody who sent me emails over the last week on the incentives for our question of the week. The question this week from myev.com is definitely going to set the cat amongst the pigeons because I see both arguments for this online, so I'm going to be really interested to see what you say. What's more important, size of battery or efficiency? Well, Tesla recently topped efficiency charts with their Model 3, and the Hyundai Ioniq is another model which does very well with not very much. So what would you rather on a new EV? A large battery or a smaller, more efficient battery that meant you had to stop more often? Tell me your thoughts online. What's more important, size of battery or efficiency? I'd love to know your thoughts. You can email hello at evnewsdaily.com. That's hello at evnewsdaily.com. Thank you to the over 100 patrons of this show. You can check it out if you want to. Patreon.com slash evnewsdaily, but totally no pressure to do that. There are 260 three previous episodes of this 264 previous episodes of the show online from all the places you get podcasts and they're all for free if you're a glutton for punishment you could binge listen if you wanted to online you can come and say hello on the social search ev news daily have a wonderful remainder of the weekend i'll catch you tomorrow